Yes, 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 yes. Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom, Salamta. Tena yist aling. I am Ras Iodonis. Iodonis the Farthest Yad and here. LOJ, the Lion of Judah Society of His Majesty. LOJS.org. Yes, I. Any comments or even critiques? Right? Please share it. You know, contact at LOJS.org and right here, here, here. And this uh, Shabuwa, at least for these. um. About five or so days, we are prepping, prep, 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 prep prepping for Pesach, for pe 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 Pesach, right? For Ainai Rastafari, Beta Israel, Passover. We, the black Jews of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Society of His Imperial Majesty. So here, here, here on the inn in the Irit here, here we are prepping for Pesach. Right, prepping for Fasika, Fasika, right, and that fulfillment, which is the Tinsai, the resurrection. So here, looking at the schedule of dates and times, you know, here in this season, according to the Gregorian, right, the Gregorian um, calendar, right, going through the calculations and everything from I and I, you know, Ethiopian Hebrew calendars, we have April, we have April. 15th, right? The Eve, April 15th, that corresponds to TJIF, thank you, Rastafari, right? The TJIF with the TJIF podcast Friday evening, right? I think for the Western Gentile um, Christians, right? Both the Catholics, the Roman Catholics, and the Protestant daughters, that is their Good Friday. So it's the 17th. Right, the Sunday that would be what they call quote Easter. Strong quotes there, Easter Sunday. Get into those details because we know Easter right there. That's not what's really in the scriptures. We Pesach, right? Pascha, Pascha, even in the coin of Greek that I and I Hebrew people spoke and speak, like we speak English and a lot of other languages. That's not our we could say ethnic root languages, you know, we the black peoples of the world. Yes, I especially over here. In this uh, 400 year dispersion in the Western, you know, hemisphere, right, on this earthly plane. But here, 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 Baruch, right, Baruch, who, you know, Baruch HaKadosh, right, you know, Baruch Hashem, you know, blessed be the Holy One, Baruch HaKadosh, blessed be the name, Baruch Hashem, the new name, the precious name. So, I and I is prepping for Pesach. So in the process of prepping for Pesach, there's a few questions that actually come up, right? And this is one of them. And we might put this in the title, you know, as kind of a point of reference. You know, these are some of the areas, you know, addressing some of the questions. Now, this question was proposed, especially from the black, the pro-black, we say the black content, the pro-comedic, certain ones and ones out there. You might have seen it. You might have even heard it discussed. And it asks whether Passover... Right, we call it Ja Passover, but whether Passover celebrates the murder of millions of Africans. What? What? You know, Passover. That's at the heart of the Exodus. So there are some out there, and this is really disinfo. Even His Majesty Gormawi Nugusnegas, the King Messiah, there's a popular meme that goes um around on social media where his majesty says about, you know, propaganda. Right. And cautions and, you know, warns that, you know, how young people, especially the younger generation, especially those babies, the babies in Rastafari, those who are just coming forward, picking up on that, on a lot of that might be, you know, might be, um, you could say, deceived or, or led astray the wrong way. Because, see, that question right there is all by and, and, and it's, a, it's a byproduct. Right. It's by and it's also a byproduct. <laughs> right. It's a, kind of like a bipolar thing. You know, it's, it's a psychotic thing. Think about it for a moment. If you believe that Passover celebrates the murder of millions of Africans, now why is even the, the question, if you really understand the question or what the question is referring to, and this is where we have a, mm, a point to make about those who did, some of those who did address this question, say that, well, the whole Passover thing that celebrates the murder of millions of Africans, to imply that the ancient Egyptians even understood or even regarded, you know, such a term or terminology. They, they did not know the terminology so-called African. In fact, African is a pseudonym. It's another byproduct. The term African is a byproduct of white race and white supremacy because it all connects with the Belgium conference. 
You recall the Belgium Conference in the 1800s? That's where they divided, you know, carved and divided the times of the Gentiles of Africa, made all these artificial nation states, right? Divided and conquered, we could say, the majority of the continent. With exception, Ethiopia becomes an exception. And also because of that divine connection, right, with this Judeo, this black, can we say black Judeo-Christian heritage, right, that the line of the tribe of Judah, right, Weep not behold, right? The conquering line, the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has what prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Weep not behold. So when ones and ones say that Passover Pesach, right, celebrates the murder of millions of Africans, a couple of points of order. Mm -hmm. Point of order. One point of order is that the term African, right, like four, three to four thousand years ago would not have been understood or known by the peoples, right? And then if they knew the truth of where this terminology comes from, especially during the time of the Belgium Conference, see, most people think that at the Belgium Conference, they only like, you know, um, the scramble for Africa and they divided and divvied up Africa among the, the white Gentile racist colonial powers of, of Europa, of Europe. They think that's all that went on. No, 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 no. This is when they they force a new name, a, a pseudonym. They force the pseudonym, right? The pseudonym of Africa and getting into the roots of that, you know, Afro-Semitically. It's interesting. Afro-Semitically in the Hebrew and also in the Royal Amharic, even getting to the Ge'ez roots, right? We can get to the roots of what that terminology means. If you look it up on many, even the etymology page, you know, they say, they try to say, well, it's unknown. It's unknown. It's unknown because it goes outside of the white Western Gentile paradigm. It's going into the so-called Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Semitic, the Kamito, Hamito, Semitic, Semito, Hamitic languages and linguistics, right? That are I and I root languages, such as we say the Hebrew, the biblical Hebrew, right? Also the Royal Amharic, right? Would turn to the people a right, a pure language, a refined language from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. All this is prophecy in the scripts, and no doubt the Habarim and the Talmudim, they're familiar with it, but we'll go into more detail for others who need some of those basics. So many of those who have even attempted they probably think that they really have addressed this point. They expose the Bible, and this is not really, you know, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, so-called Negroes, a lot of ones running out there in this so-called conscious field that are trying to say that the Hebrews and the Israelites of the scripts, the people of the book, are not black and brown people. And these are black folks who are so-called promoting pro-blackness, so to speak, and even some who might consider themselves to be so-called committic or committic scholars who are saying Right, and the hearsay. So this addresses the hearsay of whether Passover or Pesach or Fasica, right, as it is called, celebrates the murder of millions of Africans. And we respond to that and say that Passover, Pesach, Fasica does not celebrate, right, the murder of millions of Africans, aka ancient Egyptians, so called ancient Egyptians, the ancient committee. Right. Why? One of the major reasons is that the ancient peoples never even knew of that terminology. And if they had the knowledge that you can have of where the origin of so-called Africa terminology actually come from and how was it superimposed on the continent that was called Ethiopia? <laughs> right. How was that superimposed? It's just like the Atlantic Ocean today was the Ethiopian Ocean. But yet a lot of you all run around and talk about the transatlantic slave trade. And you wonder why the more you talk about it, you really don't get any further because it's a misnomer, right? It's not the true name. The true name of the ocean over which they, they traded and transported our ancestors was known as the Ethiopian Ocean. Uh-oh, that means that it's not the transatlantic slave trade, but it's actually the trans-Ethiopian slave trade. See, that makes a a world of a difference when you start to read the so-called B-I-B-L-E, the Bible, as many of our ancestors, right? Our black people, ancestors in the Americas and the Caribbean, and many of those who did the research, the intellectuals, the writers, you know, from different walks of, we could say, our black life over here, whether they were, you know, black Christians. And we're talking about the the real black Christians. And they're like, they were like the Nazarenes back in, you know, the New Testament of the Bible. You know, how they walked the walk, 
talk the talk and manifested the truth for us. That's our real roots, even in this 21st century, right? Because we still need, you know what I mean, with faith, courage, and a just cause to beat God like Goliath. Goliath. Interesting, Goliath, another way of the Hebrew, where we say Galut. Galut is the exile, the exile. Right, the exile and the exile has to do with coming out, right, of captivity, coming out of Babylon, coming out of confusion. So the first point of order in coming out of confusion has to do with name, with name. You see, the names of the true have been often in this world, flesh and satanic seclorum applied to the untrue, right? And the and the names of the untrue might have been applied to the true. It's, uh, look at look all these bywords of, of we as black people, what they have called us, you know, from such a time, especially in this 400 year uh, context. So the term African, so we're gonna address, so let's just break down this point just simply here. We're gonna get, get into like a full of full. This is just a kind of a, a proverbial, as they would say, a proverbial, you know, shot across the bow. <laughs> You know, so to speak, right? This is the proverbial shot across the bow, so to speak, right? It does not celebrate the murder of millions, first of all. It was not millions, right? And those who who were um, like the death of the firstborn, I think they're talking about the death of the firstborn. That, that's speaking about right? not even millions. Let's, let's point that out right there. And then second point about Africans, right? They were not Africans, right? In fact, if you go back even... A thousand, a thousand, fifteen hundred. Actually, if you go back, yeah, roughly around between like about maybe fifteen, eighteen, almost a little less than two thousand years ago, right? You will find that it's the Romans, the Roman Empire. They had a province up in what's modern day Tunisia on the continent called Africa, and that's what was called Africa. Touch on this in in other vlogs and videos and other people have also gone into even deeper research we kind of highlight some of the you know some of the exhibits from some of their research go into the scripts go into the bible really to, to break that down right there how the continent was called ethiopia right and then we break down also and build on how ethiopia the terminology is not Right. It may be Greek in the way many people in the Western Gentile world receives it, but even the Greeks got that from an indigenous right word, right, that has its root, right, in the Afro Semitic, we say linguistics, right? The linguistics of even Ethiopia, the Judeo Christian Ethiopia, Amhara, you know, the Amharic and the Gutas, but also the link with the Hebrew. So we get into all of that right there on the linguistic level. Here's the interesting thing. If you look at even the terms and the language Hebrew and even Amharic, think about that for a moment. Both of them are like Creoles. You know what a Creo is? Like a Creole is sort of like a blend, a Creole. They, they, both of them are, the biblical Hebrew is a Creole, right? And the biblical Hebrew and Amharic, the connection between that also shows, right, the ethnic, who is ethnic Yisrael, right? So when we speak about ethnic Yisrael, we say we are the beta Israel and Rastafari beta Israel. We're the beta Israel over here in this Western diaspora, this Western dispersion. We, like our brothers over in the East, even more so for we, if we understand the terminology and the history, our story, we are the Falashas. We are the exiles over here. We are the Falashas, similar to like the Falasha Morris. We are the Falashas over here in this Western and America, this North country and throughout the Caribbean, all right? So, Passover, right, what does it really celebrate? And what does it not celebrate? It does not celebrate the murder of millions of Africans, aka ancient Egyptians. Firstly, because it was not it was not murder, first point, right? Some people might consider it that, but we could get into those details on that reasoning, right? It was not murder. Secondarily, you have to recognize that the question is a hype question. The question is a white supremacist racist question. First of all, even if it's in the mouth of so-called black peoples who are trying to say that, yes, Passover celebrates the murder of millions of Africans. So how can you celebrate Passover? No. See, see what's going on is almost like a kind of a COINTELPRO, I don't know, point what, point what? what point what you know is it 2.0 2.5 2.3 point i don't know but it's a part of the same thing right it's kind of a modern emanation right of the COINTELPRO, pro but a lot of it's in blackface because there's a lot of pro-black 
right, you know, and, and a lot of pseudo comedic scholars that actually, right, are pushing this rhetoric, right, and it's a rhetoric especially on a lot of the babies, but check this, if Pesah, if Passover, right, is not celebrating, right, the murder, right, of millions of Africans, then the question, of course, is, well, what is it celebrating, right, and then here's the next question, if the ancient Egyptians were what we can call today, from today's perspective, black peoples, and the ancient Hebrews, right, the Israelites, the Bnei Yisrael, were also black peoples. What does it say about this event horizon, right, that's referred to with the Exodus and referred to also with um, Pesah and Passover? What does it point to, right? It, it point to man to man is so unjust, children. Man to man. Black man to even black man. That's what it's talking about. This is what we love the elders and just a hail up to the elders and double honors the elders you know what i mean mm -hmm. and those who have really you know ministered you know the truth to i and i the rastafari elders taught i and i and i and i groundation that death to black and white down presses non-partial right is that is that correct it's speaking to especially the the when we say the elders or the or the older the rastafari who have tried it you know what i mean for 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 more than say a decade let's just point that out for more than a decade more than a tent right more than a tithe so to speak right one should recognize that principle that precept the deaf to what black and white so we talk about white supremacy right white racism white supremacy and the evils of so-called you know evil white peoples then we also have to speak to right and bun out Right. And in that sense, mute it, mute it, <laughs> you know, moat, moot is interesting in the languages is death, you know, in, in the Afro-Semitic languages, moat, moot, met, muta, mota. Right. It's interesting. This terminology, right. Dead on it. Right. We have to dead on that as well. So death to black and to white. That's what the Passover or Ja Passover really points to. Right. Really points. It points to how man to man can be so unjust and in this ancient ancient context is speaking about black man to black man right so we see the beta israel and the hebrews of the bible we're basically speaking about right in today's terminologies black and brown peoples right and when we speak about the ancient egyptians right of also this event horizon right predominantly we're speaking about also black and brown peoples Right. This is why we say that Passover does not celebrate the murder of millions of Africans, a.k.a. ancient Egyptians, as some so-called pro-blacks and some comedic scholars say. It's hype. It's kind of a hype point. It's a hype question. But when we get into the details of the narrative, right, and we do the real research, right, we get into the linguistics. This is where many of the black scholars really need to up their linguistic game. They got to up their linguistic game, right? In the beginning was the word, right? We talk about word up, right? Well, in this context, in the beginning was the word, right? The word, the, the linguistics. We have to get into the language. We just can't just borrow translation. That's what a lot of people are doing. They're going to the King James Version translation and based on their best understanding of the King James Version translation, they're falling short of the glory, right? And for Rastafari, Right, who also will put out that false rhetoric, you falling short of the glory of his divine majesty, Kamali mm Hadasalasi. -hmm. He said, For my part, I glory in the Bible. So if you say you're Rasta, what part do you have in Rastafari Kamali Hadasalasi? Right? Concerning these and those matters. Right? See, this is that's a related point, but we're prepping for Pesa and we say we're going to address this right here, at least briefly. We can get into more details of the narrative, points in the narratives that will show and prove and also disprove the hearsay, right? The heresy and the hearsay that Passover celebrates the murder of millions of Africans. First of all, the people were not even called Africans. And that makes us now address the terminology Africans. It's what is called academically is called anachronistic. You know what anachronistic is, right? Anachronistic, right? Anachronistic is like something outside of its proper time, right? Something that's outside of its proper time. It's like what's, what's happening is like mixing up the timelines, 
right? And then also what's happening is that one is mis mixing up the ethnicities of these ancient people of, of really who's who, right? Who's who? Let's just share this right here for ones and ones since we are prepping for Pesach, right? Let's first of all, this is give us a teaching of his majesty. What does majesty say right here? For my part, I glory in the Bible. All right, so this is almost like a test of anyone who want to say that they're Rasta, Rastafari, because something that can abbreviate the glory and, and kind of steal. You know, they can say Rasta, and I, well, I'm Rasta, but I'm not like Rastafari, or it's not about Haile Selassie, they're Rasta because they're about pro black things and everything, and then disrespect the name. You know, disrespect the name. It almost reminds me of why even the Bible said, you know, the Jews who call themselves Jews, you have ones who call themselves Rasta, right, and are not Rastafari, right, according to the teaching of His Majesty Kanamal Bihala Selassie, right, for my part, I glory in the Bible. They have a problem with the Bible, and we understand and even understand their problem they have with the Bible. Right, the Barana Selassie said, mix up with vain imagination, right? Confusion, vain imagination. The problem they have with the Bible is that they're seeing the Bible and what the Bible truly represents as being white race and white supremacy. It's because of the times of the Gentiles, white Anglo Saxon, the wasp, you know, the wasp, white Anglo Saxon Protestant. The thing they need to do is say, wait, if they were white Anglo Saxon Protestant, and they rose up and they were all about this fight. Who were they fighting against? Who were they really fighting against? Right? They're telling you right there. White Anglo-Saxon Protestant. The black. What about the black Anglo-Saxon? You didn't know they were black Anglo-Saxon? Oh, you just thought that all of us as black people, all of us just came from what they call by the pseudonym Africa. You don't recognize that black people, wherever water touches land, you'll find Ethiopians. You, you didn't know that. Oh, see, and the Gentiles, right, the cracker, you know, the, the, the racists, right, the white supremacists and their agents. There's a good chapter in Leonard Percival Howell's book, right, I think he called about black white, right, there's a black white, you know, there's a black white chapter. We'll bring that into, you know, basically what it's saying is that you have, you know, you have the black man, right, that cuts with the racist. And a lot of these pseudo scholars out there, all they're doing is regurgitating, right, especially against the Israelites, against we Hebrews and we Israelites, right, whether we are Israelites of Ethiopia, right, or that's where we make our link or whether as our other brothers and the other camps, you know, make their link more maybe with our Israelite people in the diaspora or in certain areas, you know. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it was not so, mm -hmm, we wouldn't even be talking about it. So for my part, I glory in the Bible. So this is where many, there are many Rastafarians that because of the, uh, um, the pre-existing white supremacist racist conditioning, because they have been conditioned to believe in, in Kaiser Borgia and in Kaiser, Kaiser Jesus Borgia, you know, the whitewash lies right the cover story and even the the lying narrative because there's, there's a false narrative that's been put out right over this past 400 years so even though we might say well look ethiopia the ethiopians you know what i mean the the ethiopian jews and the christians they also have the bible so on so on but you have to understand that they did not get the Bible through the white supremacist racists. They did not get it by somebody colonizing them and whipping them and beating them and then putting a false rhetoric on top of them. Let's understand that. We're looking at Ethiopia from the historic 3,000 year view. Everything after 1975 with Ethiopia, especially even with the religion and the Christianity, is very questionable because of what they did to His Majesty. These are just the Rastafari basic facts right there, the facts of the matter. But for prepping for Pesach, get a copy of this document here. This here is one of our first, um, we could say, uh, you say Passover Haggadah. Here we have Worthy is the Lamb, Rastafari Passover Haggadah. Haggadah basically is a narration, is, is, is what we reason on, you know, what we reason on at this time. You know, as we remember in season, right, as we keep this appointment, this is the first of the feast, first of the Mo'adim, of Yahweh, hey, of Yahweh, of Jehovah, right, as we're entering here into the ecclesiastical, the churchical season for these at least seven months, seven moons. And the fulfillment, 
corresponds also with Addis Ahmed, with Ethiopia, Kingdom of God, New Year, the Rosh Hashanah time, coming forward, forward, forward. That's where the fulfillment, right, of the year, we come like to the, to the seventh, right, of the seven feasts and festivals of he who be, who he be, of Yahweh, hey, hak, adosh, baruch, hu, baruch, Hashem. Right, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name El Elohe Yisrael. Right, the power, right, the power of Yisrael. So here, here we Rastafari Beta Israel, we the Beta Israel here of the West. We are prep, 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 prepping for Pesach once again. Looking at the times, the times. Looking forward to the TJIF coming forward April fifteenth amongst the Western Gentile Christians. That is what is referred to as, um, that's referred to as um, in this year, this time, according to the correspondence of the calendar. So, so doing the, the calendar work and seeing the correspondence here from the Ethiopian Hebrew, Judaic, Hebraic calendar, lunar calendar, to the Western Gentile calendar in this time, in this season, April 15th. April 15th will be what they call Good Friday and what we call TJIF. Thank Ja Rastafari is Friday. So that's when we're going to officially begin this Rastafari bit of Israel, the, the Pesach, the Passover in this season, in this time right here. So just proclaiming it as um, Ja Torah says for I and I to proclaim it in its season. All right, so we have April 15th, right? April 15th, uh, Pesach, right? The Eve, right? Passover Eve, right? And for the Western Gentile Christians, it's um, the Protestants under the Roman Catholic. They, you have to recognize that the Christians, they, they set up Passover, not Passover, what they call it? They call it Easter. Now, Easter is a whole loaded term right there, but it's not in the Bible. Interesting, in the, in the Greek, it's Pascha. Because even the Greek reflects our Hebrew mind. People make you think that's the Romans and it's the Roman Empire and Caesar and it's, it's Titus Vespasian. It's the Caesar family that really wrote the new. It is lying, lying, lying. It's COINTELPRO, y'all. Right? Comoso's ones, you know, all they're doing is like regurgitating regurgitation. They're not able to really fact check anything, right? Because they don't have the tools. Right. You know, it's like one one man can go in and 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 dig in the ground for for diamonds and gems and rubies and stones. Right. And he can find these these gems. Right. He keeps them to himself. And then he sells cut glass to the fools and the fools are running around with us bringing cut glass and don't know that we are able to dig for ourselves. And we're able to look at that cut glass and recognize that it's not the real thing. So what a lot of these ones are saying about, oh, the New Testament was written by the Roman Empire. And it's a Roman conspiracy, and it's really they wrote that to confuse the Jews. This is all lies. Lie, 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 lie. But they said the cover up is worse than the lie. And that question that is circulating and has circulated whether Passover celebrates the murder of millions of Africans, first of all, it wasn't millions. Right? It was the firstborn, right? You're talking about the firstborn? Right? The firstborn of, of, of Paro, right? The firstborn of Egypt. Right, and of the great house, the, the great house, we have to recognize what was really going on. The first point to be made clear, right, concerning Pesach and concerning Passover is that it was Passover was responding to black on black crime. That's what Passover was responding to. I know many of you all may not have heard it like this before, and we'll get into some of the details. It was responding to a black on black crime. Right? Because the Egyptians, the ancient Kamitiyu, Mitzrayim, right? they were black peoples. And today's way of referring to them, right? from today's point of view, they will be considered, if they were walking down the street or whatever like that, they will be considered black people. <laughs> Especially the ancient Egyptians, when we start to go back to all like that particular time, we can get into the time period. right? They were not called Africans. That's anachronistic. Right? That's like avoiding the fact that there was the Belgium Conference. Because when you look at the fact that it was the Belgium Conference and you know that what occurred was not just a scramble for Africa where the different white racist colonial powers um, divided and conquered Africa and divvied up and, you know, for themselves, different portions and parts and regions and the minerals, resources, the people, the blood, sweat and tears of Africa. No, it wasn't just that. They also superimposed this, this term Africa. Right. And here's the interesting thing. A lot of people that talk about this term, they don't even know the origin of the term. 
right? What's the meaning of the term? We did a little etymology on it and we went to a couple of sites that often would get into some of the roots, but they say it's unknown. I say unknown. They say unknown. And that's because it's outside of the, the Greco-Roman paradigm, outside the Greek-Latin paradigm of the Anglo-Americans, of the white, you know, Gentiles of this world system. It's outside of their paradigm. But when you get into the Afro-Semitic, like the biblical right, languages, linguistics, like the Hebrew, right, also the Royal Amharic and the Gutas, you know, our languages, and this is interesting, the languages of black peoples, even to this very day, right, that have preserved over thousands of years, come from the same contiguous roots, right, is Afro called linguistically Afro-Semitic. So that tells you right there, Afro. Now, there's the Afar, let's not confuse Afro and the Afar, right, with Afrika, Afrika, which becomes Africa, right? If we understand going to the roots of this. But the whole content was renamed, right, in the 1800s, right? We know that for a fact. We can study the record of the maps. It was renamed. And originally, the name Africa was only a small slither and portion of the northern hemisphere that's called today Tunisia, right? So check out that name game, right? That name game right there. No. Passover celebrates the Exodus. Let's just point this out here. Passover celebrates the Exodus, or as Burhanan Selassie, Bob Marlin, the Whalers, BMW said, you know, the movement of Jah people, the movement of Jah people. But let's get into some more of the details. We hear prep, 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 prepping for Pesach, prep, 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 in this year, in this time, in this season, right? The reason, here the reason for the season, right? So, more, you know, more to come. Check out, you know, check out the podcast. Also go to LOJS.org, LOJS.org, right, for the Passover and some of the, you know, the overview, right, the overview of Passover, right? So one can at least understand how we observe it, why we observe it, you know, what are the points of reference here in the season, reason for the season. Because once you get a good groundation, and then we can do the science on the scripture and how does it apply to us, right, in this present, in the present time, right? Once we understand, you know, the science of the scripture, right, we, the people of the book, we can see how it applies to us right now, you know, even in this time, right? And even consider certain subject matters like um, um, sustainable, you know, uh, migration, right? Or some would refer to it as repatriation we can discuss those important subject matters right and where we are what is our history in modern times and we find again that connection with this divine heritage so speaking on this even the passover the passover is one of the elements of our divine heritage mm -hmm. all right and also the link with ethiopia and in particular the israelites of ethiopia as well Right. And also identifying ourselves over here in this Western Hemisphere as the Beta Israel of the West. Right. And we of the elect, the Rastafari Beta Israel, we're prep, 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 prepping for Pesach. Right. Prepping for Passover in the season this time. So beginning off, looking forward to April 15th. Right. That is the eve of Passover for the Gentile Christians, the Protestants and the Catholics. I think that's a good Friday. Right. But for us, that is the beginning of Pesach right there. And then we go forward to the 23rd of April in the Gregorian 2022. And then looking forward to the morrow after right, the Sabbath, the morrow after the Sabbath. And what is the morrow after the Sabbath? The morrow after the Sabbath right, would be the first day, the eighth day or a.k.a. called Sunday, the Ehud, the Yom HaRishon. And on the 24th of April, this is where we have um, what's called Fasika, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church Fasika. Right? We have Fasika, a.k.a. Tinsai, the Resurrection Day. And so what's the connection? Right from the Berit HaYeshana, what's referred to often as the Old Testament or Old Covenant, to the Berit Hadasha. Right? What's the what's the what's the link? What's the connection? Is there a link? Is there a connection? Some say it's not. We have found from our studies and research there is. 
right? And it's powerful if we would get to understand and to know, right, the truth for ourselves. And we hope in I and I ministry and this ministry of his Imperial Majesty, the LOJ, the Line of Judah Society, go to LOJS.org. Once again, also the contact and link, some questions, you know, comments, or even some critiques or differences of opinion that'd be good. You know, come, 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 make us reason as long as we do it, you know, respectfully and honorably. Right. As family. Right. As a, you know, divine and holy family. So Shalom, Shalom, Chavarim. This is Ras Ayadonis Tafari. This is Yadin here. L.O.J. Society of Imperial Majesty. So podcasting here. Also check out Rastafari Student. Right. For the regular the evening podcast, the Rastafari podcast the evening podcast as well and more on prep 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 prepping for pesa you know coming forward 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 but rest assured right in the truths and the facts the evidence and the reality that passover does not celebrate the murder of millions of africans right as the cointel pro the propaganda you know a lot of the propaganda even the propaganda that might be in so-called blackface by a lot of these pro-blacks and pseudo-comedic scholars, right? But it'd be good for us to get into more of the details in a fuller full video since the main of this one right here is just to announce prepping for PESA and to take on that particular question right there of whether Passover celebrates the murder of millions of Africans. No, it was a man-to-man is so unjust, children. You don't know who to trust, man-to-man. It was... The Egyptians, ancient Egyptians were black people. So we have black people, black man and black man, right? But then we can get into the details of why was this difference here? Because we do know, and we do have to just, just a little bit more, say that, yes, as Ja even reminds us, right, not to abhor, you know, the Edomite, you know, mm -hmm. Esau and right? the Edomite, he's our brother, right? nor the Egyptian, the Mitzrayim, the Kemeti, or the Kemetic, because we were strangers, right? We were what? We were strangers in his land, right? So even the word reminds us, right, of the good that even those who we had to get into this um, conflict, this difference, right, and the power, right, of, of for the Egyptian, from the Egyptian point of view, our natures, right, the power of Ha'ilahim, our Elohim, El Elohe Yisrael, Right, the Elohim of the 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 Ibrahim, right? You know, had to demonstrate, right? Why that had to? What was the what was the issue? What was the difference? Since the scripture is clear that we came in as strangers, right? And there is the good, the bad, and ugly, right? That we experience. So there's the good that ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet was and served for us as. Hebrews and as Israelites, we have to recognize that. Let's recognize it. This is to all the camps. Let's recognize that. Let's even focus on those good aspects, right? Because then we can show the people the transition, right? It's like even in modern times, you know, like in America, for example, you know, we might have one period of time where things went well, or at least better by comparison for us, right, amongst the Gentiles. And then the whole new administration comes in. Right, that has a racist or has a, you know, has a has has a hatred against us, against John people, right, and does everything in its power to exterminate us, right, to commit genocide. Now, it's easy for people to see it in the terms of white and black, right, but it seems as though it's not so easy for ones to see it in the term of black on black. You know, they talk about black on black crime. Right? So the Exodus was actually a response right, to an ancient black on black crime. Now, what was the crime that went on? Right? Let's get into the details of that. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. Yeshua Shalom.